everybody, and welcome to the Quadcopter Review. I'm your host, Pepe Prawns, and today we're going to be looking at the Beta 140. Before we go there, though, let's remind everybody, look in the upper right-hand corner for the latest giveaways. You always want to get in on those, and look at the bottom right on the logo to subscribe. So the first thing we're going to do is take a look at our parts list. Now remember when I do builds, I don't do all the soldering and the things like that and film that because that just takes too long and I don't think it's that exciting of a thing to do. And don't pay attention to what you see on the deck because what I was working on here was trying to get the most inexpensive build as I could. So the first thing we're using is the Beta FPV Beta 140 and that is a Truex frame that is 140 millimeters and it is a 2.5 millimeter bottom plate we have side plates here little side plates that are coming in at one millimeter and those go attached to these aluminum side plates here which are nice and thick you know that's eight millimeter something to that degree now next up we are going with the mamba stack now this stack i have a review for you can look for it in the upper hand right hand corner it was made by diatone and it is 33 dollars it is dirt cheap and it is rated for 4s with a 25 amp ese now the Foxier Aero Micro Pro, this is a 600 TLD FPV camera. We're using the FR Sky XM Plus. I used an XT60, that way I could hook it up to one of my bigger batteries. We're also using the Runcam TX200, which maybe a lot of you haven't heard of, but that is a 25200 switcher. Now, I'm also a big fan of 1306 3100 kV motors, which aren't the easiest thing to find often, but they're really, really good if you're not looking to race, but you're you know, wanting to, to fly around the house still with a 3-inch, which is often difficult to do. But as I said, I got these from LHI, 1306 motors. 3100 kV and I really like these motors. Yes, they're not the most powerful thing in the world, but they're super super efficient Now the last thing we can add to our list is I went out and got some of these iFlight Nazgul props uh, Mostly because I like the name. How cool is it to, to say I've got Nazguls on my my quad now They're a pretty aggressive prop coming in at 3061 so that's that's pretty aggressive pitch for a prop when I say I'm making a cruiser but I didn't have too many problems with it I mean I normally would go with something like on these uh, 1106 motors I'll usually go with something more like this Jim uh, fan four blade but again the, the price on these two I got uh, four full sets so 16 for uh, just under 10 bucks so you know a little over two dollars uh, for a full set of props I thought was a pretty good deal on our inexpensive build here so speaking of cost let's go ahead and look at the build cost so the cost of this build will break it down item by item the beta FPV frame was $30 the diatone mamba was $33 the Foxier Aero Micro Pro was $20. The Runcam TX was $15. The LHI 1306 motors were $30 for all four, $15 for the FR Sky XM Plus, and basically $2 for the iFlight Nazguls. So that's going to give us a grand total of $145 on our little home build here. And once again, links will be in the description and in the comments below if you're interested in any of these parts. Now let's talk about the one challenge I did have during the build. I wasn't quite aware that how low profile the top plate is, so I think that's just 20 millimeters. So the Mama Stack itself did fit in there pretty snugly, but it did fit. And of course you could adjust this up with some risers if you needed to. But what I had to do once I mounted it is I did have to mount my VTX and my receiver on the top part of it. I just printed out a little TPU flat piece uh, that would hold both of those items and I made that work. So you'll be able to see here as I give you an under look there that it did fit. It is tight, but it's not pressing against the board. I don't have any carbon fiber on the board or anything. And right there on top, I designed and made that little TPU piece to hold both my receiver and the VTX so they don't sit on each other without having some TPU between them. Uh, don't laugh at me about the antennas, but uh, the XM Pluses I have came with these super long antennas and... 
I, you know, just went with it instead of changing them out. So I'm going to run an 800 3S maw on this, and that usually works pretty good on this kind of flight. It doesn't compromise weight and still gives me the power I need. Uh, as far as a strap goes, I got, you know, these nice, um, you know, Nitro Nectar Newbie Drone straps that have goo on them there and we have the race day quad strap as well that has that sticky already pre-built on them both of them phenomenal straps and i'm going to use one of those on here to help hold that battery in place while i'm flying now if you're hearing the noise in the background i do apologize i've got about 12 hours of printing to do for my little side project there called pandemic fpv you can find those links in the description that is where i will print any tpu or pla product for you that you find on thingiverse or any of my own for your little quads and that's how we earn money for the channel instead of asking for patreons so let's go ahead and take this little baby and we're going to stick it on the scale and see if we are under that magic 250 number. So let's put the quad up here. I'm going to get the cable in there too because that does count as some weight. So we have 123.7 grams totally built. And if we add our lipo on here, we are at 204 slash 205 grams. So we are under the 250 gram marker if you're in a place that is those laws into effect. I also apologize for those little pointy uh, bolts there. I didn't have left and right hand screw bolts. I only had right hand screw bolts. Because these motors are still sold in clockwise and counterclockwise versions, so you do need your... Uh, goofy threaded bolts in order to use a standard bolt and they come with these little arrows all right guys so let's go ahead and take a look at a flight now the first thing you're going to notice is the foxier osd is on the screen and not the beta flight osd but that is because i didn't have the proper cable that you need you need a three pin plus two pin cable that has a pigtail on it in order to use the joystick to change the camera OSD and turn it off, which I didn't happen to have on me, but uh, I know the efficiency of these motors and the flight time I get, so I was perfectly willing to go ahead and move on without that. But the Mamba stack does have an OSD built on it, and it works fine. I, I checked to make sure that was the issue, was me, not it. But what happens is they get into conflict in the OSDs and the camera wins. Now let's talk a little bit about these iFlight Nazgul props. As you can see, I'm not having any prop oscillation really going on at all. Um, they seem to be working just fine as cruiser props as well as, you know, being aggressive props really made for racing. I'm not having any issues with these here. As you'll see here, we do need to do a little tuning. I did run it with straight uh, Betaflight which is just the stock version there was no tuning at all done to the board so we're not getting a nice snappy roll like we want to have but our pitch is working just fine as you'll see coming up here i can pitch it and make a flip without any issue and it's pretty well locked in now next we can talk about the motors the motors themselves i hope you can see here from the footage are again not aggressive but but they're nice little cruisers i mean you can get the speed and you can get the punch when you need to but at the same time you're getting that efficiency and you're getting that nice smooth cruise effect if i mounted a smaller camera on here like the firefly or something like that i'm going to get some nice hd footage that actually you can follow with your eye instead of getting motion sick while i'm doing like 50 flips and things like that that's which is just not my style my, my style is a bit more of a cruiser if you like that kind of thing this particular build right here is a great option for that I mean you can see how easily you can just slow that guy down and just bring him into a nice easy run so I hope that if you're interested in it is kind of a determining factor to to let you know how great these little motors are now the VTX I'm not seeming to have much of an issue with it at all you know it's it's fairly clear uh, it's on 200 megahertz uh, I'm have the house fully you know in my way and i'm only running into issues when i get the house and the tree between me so you're going to be able to run this you know in your your 150 meter you know around your house range uh not really 
looking to take this out and do any kind of range testing with this VTX because we already know that there are way better VTXs out there if you want to do long range. So I hope this video was helpful to you. Again, if you want any of these parts, just look for them in the links. Uh, don't forget to subscribe and like this video. And as always, guys, enjoy this hobby. Happy flying. Hey guys, thanks for stopping by and checking out the quadcopter review. If you want to see more interesting reviews on FPV related stuff, take a look up here in the old right corner right there. You'll find links to all the rest of my reviews. If you want to get in on some of the best giveaways on YouTube, look over here. Don't forget to subscribe right here on my chin. And if you want to check out my flying only videos separated from the review channel, check that out right here. And thanks for coming. Don't forget to subscribe and happy flying.